Hey guys, uh, this is Dan Graham. How are you doing, guys? Um, I just wanted to give people some filmmaking advice on using um, HDV cameras that run on tapes, HDV tapes, or DV tapes, whatever, and have a problem trying to import into their computer with the highest quality possible. Um, this is a problem that I've been dealing with for the last year and three months. Um, I got a camera, uh, a very nice HDV camera, um, great quality and stuff. A Sony, Sony's are always reliable. This is a, this was a Christmas present from, not this past Christmas, but uh, last Christmas. It's a Sony, um, handy cam runs runs on HDV. I don't know if you can read it. It says at the top there HDV 1080i, and DV runs on DV tapes. And here's a little, uh, whatever. Yep. So, so it takes HDV tapes. And one of the issues I had, because, you know, I'm a, I'm a filmmaker, I like to film a lot of things from sports to interviews or whatever, and I was always used to recording on camcorders like the one I'm recording on now, and I was always just used to uh, finishing up recording, just popping the memory card out, putting it into my computer, and away we went. And uh, when I got this camera, I knew this was a step up for me. This is a much more professional camera when I take it out on gigs and whatever. And the problem was that I did not know how to use tapes. I did not know how to use HDV tapes. I knew that the quality would be great on these, uh, much more advanced and stuff. But this was a whole new learning experience for me. And I spent the last year and three months trying to figure out how to work HDV tapes and importing them into a PC or whatever. And um, it, it took me this long to figure it out. And I'm so glad I did, finally. But uh, I wish I had known about it sooner and I would have gotten a lot more work accomplished uh, in that time period apart from... Uh, just asking around and just finding opportunities to import HDV tapes anywhere. And so now that I finally figured this out, I want to share it with you guys so that you guys can save the time and effort into figuring out how to import HDV tapes. Um, one of the few solutions is um, if your computer has an express card slot, if you don't know what that is, express card slot is usually something on the side of your computer. Um, it was used uh, for a few things. Um, what I heard from it was um, you could put like your Wi-Fi or whatever in there, like your Verizon chip or something like that. That's one of the things I heard about it. Uh, Express card slot, like I said, like it's usually on older models. I'll show you a model of a computer in just a second. But what I started off doing was using an Express card adapter. And this worked very well when I first found out about it. And as you can see, it has the little Firewire um, imports on it, the ports. Um, I believe it's a six pin. I'm not, I'm not too keen on the pin on the pins of what types they are. But this is the cable that I've been using to import HDV tapes on for a while. Um, it has this one that goes, this end that goes onto the computer. That's not the computer, um, the camera. And this is the one that goes into my computer. And so I got this adapt, I got this cord and I found this adapter and I put it right in and I'll show you in just a second. Let me just get the camera up. Oh, you can see a close up on my face, how you doing? Okay, so this was one of my first laptops I started making movies on. I've had this since high school pretty much. And it's, it's an old computer, not gonna lie. It's a Dell Inspiron. I don't even know the model number. But it's a Dell and the express card slot is right here. Okay? And so I just pop it out. Just pop this little thing out that protects the inside. And then I pop the express card slot in. And then of course it takes your computer a little while to recognize it. And then um, I was able to import it and I was ready to go. Uh, however, this computer is very ancient and has, I believe it has some viruses on it that I don't know how to get rid of. But um, because of the viruses, um, I would be getting drop frames constantly. It wasn't like every couple minutes, it was like every other second I'd get drop frames. So this, I, this whole process for me went in and out v rather quickly and I was very upset by that. And so I had to go back to the start, go back to square one, and figure out another way to import into other computers. For example this computer I have right here, or my PC at home, my desktop. And, of course, these are newer models of computers, and newer models don't have express card slots. Not a lot of them do, and that's very unfortunate. And so you have to figure out, okay, what's the common denominator of computers? Like, what does every computer model have that um, solution for this can be accessible to anybody? And, of course, the main common denominator among computers is... Ta-da! The USB slot. So you have to find... Um, something, an adapter that can go through a USB and take this wire or whatever wire and work with it. Now, 
I've seen um, models online that uh, that has you know it has uh, this port you know this this slot on this end and a USB on this one do not buy that do not buy that it does not work trust me I've I haven't tried it out but I've heard 100% of people say that it does not work it's a scam don't don't deal with it but however there are USB adapters that can put this into your computer and it will read it and you will be able to trans uh, put your video process your video into a computer cleanly and that is one second da 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 the Pinnacle Studio Movie Box. And this is a very handy software. In fact, I've had this for a year. I didn't know how to use it correctly until I learned about drivers and everything, how you have to update your drivers or install a certain driver for this. Um, I was always under the impression, me being stupid, was that the computer would do its due diligence and as soon as I plugged it in, it would automatically install the driver for it. And uh, when it didn't, and I was like, okay, this doesn't work, it's a waste of money, blah, 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 whatever. So I threw it, so I threw it away. Thankfully, I didn't throw it throw it away. I just put it to the side, and then I, I found out about um, installing drivers and downloading drivers off certain websites, and I finally installed the driver on my, uh, my desktop at home and the computer that I have right here, and it works like a charm, you know? Pending any viruses, I don't think I'll be seeing any drop frames uh, ever, anytime soon. So this is my... Bottom line recommendation, the Pinnacle Studio Movie Box. It has the Firewire port, it has an S-Video slot right here in the middle, and it has, if you go in old school, it has the yellow, white, and red cables for just about anything. Um, but, you know, if you go with DV, you're going to get high def quality, and I'll show you in just a second about how I've been able to process videos through this. And um, it's been a big success for me. Like, it, this is a great breakthrough. I wanted to share it with you guys. And I know that there are other videos that tell people to buy a Pinnacle Studio, studio Moving Box. It is, it is a great investment if you're a filmmaker and you don't want to spend a lot of money on just getting a computer that specializes in Firewire ports. Um, I know on many Mac models, they do have a Firewire port in the back. You can always go to get a Mac if you want to go on uh, Final Cut. And uh, if, you, if you're a Mac person in general, you can go go that route. But if you're a PC person like me who is not keen on the Macs just yet, the Pinnacle Studio Movie Box is the answer, is the solution to your problem. Runs on USB. It's perfect. So I'm just going to show you in just a second. Hello again. I'm going to show you in just a second how the Pinnacle Studio Movie Box can work. And by the way, Pinnacle Studio Movie Box, it's um, I don't think it's around anymore. Unfortunately, even though it's a it's a great it's a great uh, software, a great um, great item here in general, you can just buy the Pinnacle Studio Movie Box alone. If you buy this along with the with the USB cable and whatever, you're you're set to go. You don't have to download the Pinnacle Studio Movie software. Don't even bother with that. But uh, I'm gonna show you in just a second. You can just go on uh, eBay or Amazon to look up the Pinnacle Studio Movie Box. It is a great buy. I refer to it as the Pinnacle Egg because look at it. Um, there's also a black model in color black. There's also a, an older model, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest getting that. I would go with the egg, but I'll show you just a second as you see my uh, preferences on what I buy on eBay. Pinnacle Studio Movie Box, right there. Pinnacle Studio Movie Box. You can just uh, type it in on eBay or Amazon or whatever shopping website you go on, and you get like a lot of results from it. A lot of them is just a standalone egg. And a lot of them are just the other ones. Let's see if I can find the older model. Yeah, that's the older model right there. The, the uh, the square. Uh, it has the same ports, but it's, it's kind of it's kind of older. It's a little bit older. But you know, pretty much the general price is around fifty dollars. Uh, a lot of them ask for more because you know it is a very hard to find product. Um, it's not. I don't think Pinnacle itself sells it anymore. But you know, eBay and Amazon are the best ways to go if you want to go find buy in the studio movie Pinnacle Studio Movie Box. And believe me. Uh, Best thing I could have done with my money, when it comes to, when it comes to my filmmaking, and it's uh, it's great for me. I enjoy my speed stick. Anyway, so I'm just gonna show you in a quick second how to uh, import your videos. I do mine in a certain way. You might do yours differently, but this is how I came about to do it. Okay, welcome back everybody. So now I'm gonna show you how I go about importing my HDV videos into my PC with the Pinnacle Studio Movie Box or the Pinnacle Egg, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so I use a software called Corel Video Studio Pro. Uh, it's a very dependable software, a very simple software. I do have Adobe Premiere Pro, but I import my videos through Corel Video Studio Pro because Corel is kind of a little more basic, kind of like for it's kind of like 
filmmaking for dub for dummies, and uh, this was pretty much my primary movie making software up until I got Adobe Premiere Pro. But I use Corel Video Studio Pro still um, because it's, it's 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 simple. But okay, let me get back to this. Okay, so obviously what you do, you take your camera, you put it in the VCR mode, and then you back it up a little bit. Uh, I finished importing a video the other day of a basketball game, and you heard that the uh, computer recognized the the camera, as you heard from the sound. So I'm just going to rewind my video a little back. I'm just going to go about 30 seconds back, or 40, whatever. Okay, so, yeah, it's basketball, so I'm just going to hold off on it for right now. And, so of course, it's plugged in. Firewire is plugged into the Pinnacle Studio movie box. So now, of course, I'm going to go over to Capture Video. And it's going to take a while for it to, to recognize it. And it's coming up. Let's give it a few more seconds. And looks like we're ready to go. Just got to wait for the source to come up. I still got to wait a little bit. I'll take a sip. Oh, you heard it. Okay, so you see, it recognized my camera. The Sony HDR FX7, and that's the frame I'm currently on on my on my camera, as you can tell. It's right there to confirm it. So it's working it's working already. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna make this a temporary file because I already imported it before, but this is just a quick 30 second uh, thing just to show you so that you know that I'm not lying to you. And I apologize in advance that this is too long, but I figure you want to get all the information instead of some of the information and then going off and googling more information about it, but I'm giving you the whole package deal here. So, here we go. No turning back now. Okay, so I'm going to click Capture Video, and we're going to go and capture it. And I set my, I set my, my file location on my desktop so I can just get rid of it on, on the fly. But it's going to import the video. So, so I'm just going to lower it a little bit. Um, does it, it won't affect the frame or anything. Okay, yeah, so they're getting ready to bring it in. No, nope. Yeah, one, two, three, team. All right, let's go. Let's go, basketball. All right. So, there you go. Same as on the computer. All right, we'll stop capturing right there. I'll turn off the camera. Okay, so right then and there, you are done. And I'm so glad that this finally worked out. I'm just going to play the video back for you so that, you know, I'm not lying to you. So there it is. It's right there. You can always rename the file after you're done. It will always come up with this code at the bottom, whatever your computer reads it as, uh, coming from your camera through the FireWire port. Okay. So there it is. So there it is, pretty much flawlessly. Okay, so that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I just want to go back and confirm. Yeah, okay, that had a little fuzz there because it was just it was just getting ready to capture. So it was just a camera catching up to the PC or vice versa. But it does work, trust me it does. And um, as you saw right there, it's easy to work with. And uh, that's pretty much all I have for you today. So I just wanted to do this video, and now it's going to be like 15 minutes or whatever, but... Um, I did it for a reason so that you guys get the whole idea about how Pinnacle Studio Movie Box works and how you can import your HDV uh, camera footage into your PC without the luxury of having a FireWire port on your computer or an Express Card port on your computer. You can just do it through the USB, like 100% of computers have, and it's the universal way to uh, import your videos. So, once again, this is Dan Graham signing off, and have fun with your filmmaking.